And the thing I want to do is I want to reinforce some of the color in these guys. So I don't quite think that the like torchlight is working yet. Um, so I'm going to play around with a few tones here. Uh, class has been really well. I'd say they were quite enjoyable. I think people had a good time. Hopefully learned something. Now we can get back to the painting. Evening, Gary. So we're going to make some adjustments. And the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of push this orange tone a little more, which might mean like reinforcing it with some of the, the green to desaturate it. But I want to try and get a bit more of this orangey feeling in the, in the fire. So we're going to enhance a bit the color with just like glazing some orange back in to push it a little further. Reinforce IHR Miniatures, Dan. How are you? So you can see just already how much it's like kind of changed to the, the skin tone. Push the orange, push it. Gotta get more orangey feeling. Now, if I do too much orange, right? Like that's, he no longer looks greenish. Like his face doesn't really look in, like it's in the light. So I am going to have to like come back and re-highlight this. Um, but you'll see that that orange color with some, you know, yellow. We get this like desaturated, kind of orangey yellow tone for a skin color. So we want to just push more into this kind of family of of tones to give 
that feeling of a uh, bit more feeling of firelight. You know, I've had two weeks to reevaluate kind of the colors. So we're going to really try and push like the atmosphere some while still maintaining the like sense of green skin through the color constancy. Some of you may have learned that term. You can see it's quite orange now. Hey, Force. I have checked the mail and know the grass is not really tall at all. So now we can push a little more into this guy. Okay, something like that. How's fishing, huh? You catch so many fish. Right, so now we can begin to push a little more, and that's going to bring the light back. So now we, we have a bit more intense, like, color contrast between the two, the two sides that we didn't quite have before. Vegas was good. Didn't didn't see a whole lot of Vegas proper, but that's okay because I've been before and honestly, like casinos and stuff don't really interest me that much. Not a big touristy guy. Hello, hi Christian. So now you can kind of start to see like just the difference in the color makes of the lighting. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Hello from Australia. Hi. So we can push the light a little bit more. Thanks, chum dab. All right. 
Uh, I'll make sure I'm looking at my reference photos, see where some of the bigger color transitions happen. Like so, okay, so getting the, the color right in the, um, these like brownish tones in the color transition, so it would be like the core shadow of where the firelight meets the um, the moonlight is going to be really important. So we've got to get this like kind of interesting brownish. It's like this desaturated brown, almost like you can go almost purple. So if I take some of the blue and the, the red oxide, you can see it turns into this like dark reddish purple tone. Morning Cragzog. And this is where I want to use, like, what I want to use for really deep uh, shadow transitions, right? So it'll change from this sort of, and you can see it doesn't really look purple here. But as the color transitions from one to the other, right, as we go through this red into the greens, the more, um, this is basically all got to get covered because there's another little goblin that hangs out on his back. As this gets covered and we go through that, that like deep red, it'll go more into these, these, uh, pale blue green colors so you can see if i mix this it's going to turn very gray we can add a little bit of our like base goblin skin tone color you can see it start there it starts to turn very very gray And depending on how much of this we add, right, maybe it goes slightly more bluish. Right, that subtle tipping point between what reads as green and what reads as red is when you're going through these subtle grays is uh, a very delicate balance. But the idea will be essentially to use that everywhere to create a green, cool shadow color. And then it transitions more to this warm firelight tone. Hi, Steve. So now we add a little more of each. Right.
And this is okay, but what I really need, like this is a bit saturated. It's fine for like just before the final highlight. But I'm going to need something a little bit more um, like not quite this. This is this is not quite the right color. Uh, something like in between, something like this, probably mixed with the aquamarine. So this, this is kind of my moonlight, which means I take that and add it to my previous mixture. And that'll become the, the highlight color for the moonlight. <laughs> Something along those lines. Okay. Now we might have to tone that back, but I just want to make sure the, the color is correct. Okay. Might have to go one more, slightly more yellowish color. Just to really get into that firelight tone. So if I take the yellow and mix it with the, the skin tone. Okay. Now we don't want anything brighter than like the actual flame is going to be. So the flame is basically going to be like pure white and yellow. Um, but these areas closest, so the little guy sits on top of him, holds the flame out like over his head, and the, the, his arm is like one of the closest things to the actual flame. So we want the top of his arm to have more firelight on it than like anything else. There's the most in, intense amount of firelight. And then as it kind of goes down in a way, that firelight will die off. We watched a video, or I did an explanation, I mean, of the, uh, inverse square law last video and kind of how a light source um, can affect like is affected by the, the distance it is to the object so fall off happens differently hello doms thanks for the tier one I appreciate it Four months. Okay, so we push push the light a little bit more here.
How's everyone doing, by the way? Getting ready for their shit, all the shows? Since Christian so graciously decided to tell us how, how close Nova is. Eric, why do you start with a more green sketch and then go more orange? Uh, because I was searching for the color, right? Had nothing to do with, like, why I didn't choose to go more green. I'm just aiming for a certain feeling, and I didn't quite get it right on the first go, so... Just had the guilds in on the weekend in Sydney. Yeah, I saw Dave. Got best in show for his his elf figure. Congrats to Dave. Hi, Roxana. Did they both display their their elf? Did they both bring them? Or just Dave? Like were they both in competition? Sorry to hear that, 10X. Both they both had them? Hmm. Interesting. And Dave Dave's one? Okay. I know Tebow's in Australia right now. Which one did I like more? Okay, let me let me start. All right, before anybody goes getting mad at me, I like Dave. Dave's a great painter. I do not think that that figure is super successful. Um, there's a lot of things that work really well on it. But I think the thing people are, you know, getting all hype about, the, the, like, reflection in the steel armor, for me, does not work. I do not think it is uh, particularly effective. I think it's too, there's, it's got too much clarity. Um... Yep, there's like no distortion to the image. It looks, for me, this is my personal opinion. Okay. Um, it looks like an image like printed on the armor instead of like a reflection of the environment. And uh, another reason for that is because I don't feel like the rest of the figure includes enough of that, like, environmental color in order to sell the fact that that's, like, that's that 
environment like a lot of the tones and the golds and stuff do not mirror what's in the what's in the steel in terms of coloration um I think a lot of the like little reflections he did like the hair reflecting in the armor only really work from very specific angles um I think it's an interesting exercise, but I don't think it's a super successful model. Hi, Ginger Beef. Thanks for the tier one. I think the gold on the model is a lot more effective than the than the steel. But I also don't think that the gold um, reflects similarly to the way the steel does like a lot of the colors that are in the steel do not match up to the colors or the gold colors in the golds do not match up to the colors in the steel um, if I it's funny because when I saw it I was working on literally this this guy right in in the workshop like when he showed it and I feel like this uh, is a very similar sort of color palette to kind of what he was doing in in the golds or in the in the armor. Um, and like a lot of the color of within the skin, like how the you get these like warm pinks and stuff in the mid tones uh, that goes more yellow and then kind of purples and blues. Uh, like the way they reflect the the gold and the steel had, has to have the same uh, color changes. That makes sense, right? So if one goes through those through those all those colors, the other thing has to also go through those colors. Just tinted yellow. Thanks, whoever asked for turning this into Critique Dave stream, where Dave didn't ask. But, anyways, it's good. Like, the skin is really good, the hair is really nice. What do I think of the new Aquilary Mercenary? I think it's super cool. I think it's really nice. I think it's a nice mixture of uh, like fantasy and historical elements. I think getting Raul to sculpt it was uh, a good choice because Raul has a background in historical historical sculpting. I mean, you guys might not know this, but Raul Latore is like one of the best historical miniature sculptors the last like 20 years who is that Darth, what's that? 
Darth something. I can't read it. it didn't pop up in the Darthamun. Hello. Uh, okay. So coloration seems to be doing a little better. Uh, it's a little more along the lines of what I was looking for. Just have to keep working these kind of colors into these intermediate areas. So we can make a clear distinction between, you know, the, the firelight and the Firelight in the shadow side. End up with a lot of these sort of colors, these like sort of skin tony, orangish colors. Right, something along those lines. Now, I don't want to overdo him. Um, because a lot of this model has to, like, work in context with itself. So we have to create some kind of like intermediate Uh, for the metal, I'm going to start with the same thing. Start with this dark tone. Right. In general, we'll be using a lot of the same colors here. getting these these warm browns and such uh, and then we'll go up through the kind of warm colors and then down through the, the more desaturated cool tones We can use a little bit of the, the like glacier blue to to desaturate the orange, lighten this up, so that we though we still go through the this sort of color is not quite as intense as the the actual firelight. Um, we're going for like a kind of rough 
uh, sort of color here. So we want to think about like where the reflection is going to be. It's going to be really intense. No, you cannot buy my workshop bust online. You got to take my workshop. You can buy the one without the hood from Chimera when they're uh, from the kick from the Velvet Kickstarter, but I don't know when those are delivering and when the the retail one will become available. But no, it's my workshop bust. No, it's not Tophilus. I did not say that. Were you guys making stuff up? Never said that was going to be the figure. Oh, is it going to be? I thought you said it's going to be. I didn't, no question mark. I was like, geez, just trying to make, manifest it? Like, nah. What is this project I'm doing currently? It is a bunch of goblins coming out of a doorway. I will link to it. Let me find Joaquin. Uh, I think he restocked, I hope. I know it like sold out after the last stream. Uh, it's still out of stock. Well, he says he's supposed to restock it soon, so if you want to order one, yeah. Oh, thanks. He said he was going to restock soon, but yeah, it sold out after the last last stream, so. Uh, it's a, a whole bunch of goblins together doing little goblin things, you know. You trying to turn Marco against me? What are you doing? So we gotta think of the the flame coming up here. There's gonna be more flame here. So we're kind of base coating it in a sort of unusual color. This is where really the light's gonna be most intense. But anywhere where that torch can see, right? We're gonna get the strong yellow tones. Uh, we got to think about how he's coming out of the doorway, where the, the torch will reflect. Because metal is not the same as plastic, we can't just use... Um, we can't just use my 
reference material, like my exact reference image. Uh, do you still have classes for SMC? Probably not. No, I sold out. The My SMC class sold out in like 10 minutes or something. Not a new tab, it'll just be in the announcements tab. Hello, Luminac. How are you? How big are the classes at SMC? Uh, 16 people? Something like that? So here I'm just trying to like roughly get some color and shape onto him. I'm not trying to really like detail anything. I just want to get a rough form. So I know what is what. Right, so this side is all going to be like black because the helmet faces towards the light, right? This does not face towards the light. This will reflect the shadow side. Um, his ear does face towards the light though. And some of his fur. This is quite yellow, uh, so the bridge of his forehead's all, or his brow ridge is all going to be quite yellow. This comes down here, sort of hits him on the front of the helmet, creates a reflection towards the viewer. Marco Frazzoni, hello, hi Marco. How are you? Eric, will you be painting at any stands at SMC? I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know. I haven't planned that far ahead. Uh, Scooter42 and Jam Geoso. Jam Geoso. Hi, welcome. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sure I will, but I don't know. Which ones? So, I'm gonna make sure we get the nice strong yellow on top of the hand. We're just sketching in the light. from Portugal who said that did I miss a message oh hello from Portugal Eric started painting last month and you quickly became a reference for me learning a lot from watching you paint oh regalo I'm good thank you 
just got back from hold on Ugh, get the hair out of the way what's up just got back from Vegas doing lots of workshops and things Having a fun time. Little workshop, little private coaching. Do you have the base built out for this piece? Yeah, it's somewhere. It's somewhere over there. It's not primed or anything yet, but I can grab it. I wouldn't call it a base. It's more a doorway like this and then the little guys like stick out of the doorway it's all flat on the back so I'm gonna put it in a picture frame how is your LVO masterclass doing by the way if you want to sign up for LVO masterclasses the Las Vegas open in January they are on sale I believe I have Six seats left. I don't know how Marco is also teaching. I don't know how many he's got left. But they're going fast. Get them while they're hot. LVO, Las Vegas Open. It's a convention. Convention, miniature painting contest. I haven't decided when, uh, but I might come in early just because flights are much cheaper to fly on a Monday. So maybe I'll just do a full week. A full week in Las Vegas.
So you can see this the torch doesn't reach that side of his face. Oh yeah, I'm sure the tickets for hockey is very cheap. Nothing seems cheap in Las Vegas. Oh my god. So you can kind of see we're sort of like this is going to be the wrong color for his helmet. Um, instead, we want to kind of switch straight from this to this guy. So it's going to like not be as green as the other one. It is all relative, relative to me. When I'm speaking about how expensive it is, I'm, I'm directly referencing how expensive it is for me. All these dang California people keep moving out to, to Las Vegas, making the prices go up. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, monsieur. See you, Marco. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Or I guess just have a good a good rest. Right, so yeah, we'll see kind of see we're sort of separating. It's just a sketch. We're just sketching. Seeing how we feel about the color. Right, so we get something like that, but then also his helmet is sort of round, so we could get like a reflection of his arm that maybe wouldn't be as intense. We're just sort of feeling it out right now, just kind of feeling it out.
Okay, so he's gonna go like on top of him. Very difficult to line up, but it's literally like on his back. Boy, it's warm in here. See ya, thumbs. Thanks, John. Yeah, but this is also rough. Like, I don't know if I necessarily recommend everyone to do it this way. Um, What works for me might not work for some other people. A lot of times what I'll end up doing is like I'll do a sketch like this just to get like sort of some rough idea in place and then I'll end up covering over the whole thing anyways. Hey, dude. Yeah, for sure there's a lot going on in a, in a complex scene like this, so you have to... kind of helps just to get like a rough idea in place. Um, but also sketching like this leads to a lot of cleanup later. Hi Fenric, hola, que pasa tío? So he has like a leather hood.
Oi. Okay, I need a second. I will be right back. I gotta grab a drink. It is so dry in here. I feel like my paints are drying out very fast. Always, Fenric, always more green skins. I actually just finished this guy. Let me zoom out. Look at this cute little guy right here. Look at him. He's so cute. Those little Pikachu cheeks. Am I keeping this guy? No, man. I don't keep nothing. Everything is sold. We're all sold. All right, let's, uh, let's real quick, let's just throw some color on the torch just to get a feeling for some, some color tone. The thing about the torch is we want it to be like really bright. So we're not going to use too much. Uh, probably have to push more white into it actually. We want it to be like a super yellow. Uh, so probably only like a tiny bit of orange will get used on the torch itself. Get rid of these little bubbles, don't want them. Hello. Nope, there's no, uh, there's no vowels in that, so. Can't read it. It's impossible. Thanks for following. So, get the idea of like the torch flame. Hi, Inky. That I can, that I can do.
All right. Uh, let's see. Push the orange a little more. That's fine. So really the goal here, we we'll could zoom in a little. Now we could start to sort of refine some of these parts a little bit. Really going to be to like separate the light and shadows or the, the two light sides. It's a technical question. Did you decide yet that the torch is the stronger light source or is it the moonlight highlights kick in later? Uh, the torch is the stronger. Well, they're kind of equal light sources. The for most of the figure, they're pretty equal in terms of the strength of the light source. The uh, the torch will be stronger at the area that is closest to the torch. So overall, like maximum strength of the torch will be brighter, but the overall uh, moonlight is like more consistent. I don't know if that makes a ton of sense, but...
the torch is stronger but falls off faster where the where the uh moon is more um equally strong across the whole scene so it won't go quite as bright Yeah. Yes, two different levels of saturation also. The, the blue light is less saturated. Hello, thanks for following. Welcome. So these kind of parts are really important here that we get like these little lights that hit like on his brow and uh and on like underside of his eyelids here, right? In his eye socket. So as the light comes in this way, another light's coming up this more forward from this direction. Right? So it's going to get like up in here and light up some of these parts. Wardrew. Hello, welcome. Okay, so you end up with something sort of like that, uh, obviously. We've got to really start to like push individual parts.
That's kind of the idea. So together, right? So he's probably not quite right. Like the his face is probably a little off in color. So hey, you can now you can kind of start to see the interplay between the coloration a little more. Um, probably need to play with some of the color of his teeth a little bit. Yeah, I mean this. Is, so this is a little. I mean, you could call this low as hell, and it is, but I think this is like a bit on the advanced side to just, like, I think people get like an impression of what OSL is when you say OSL, and uh, Though technically would be correct to call this OSL, I think it's a little more complex than than your typical OSL. So there's something that really interesting happens in the ears. Uh, in the deep recesses here, We want to really get this like strong orange.
because the light is going to pass through his the like skin of his ear and create this like almost glow and then on the more thick ridge section you can add a little bit more reddish gray to it Gonna put a bit of blue highlight, bluish. To make it look like uh, the light is hitting from the front also. You got like two light sources interacting. One is literally passing through his ears, and the other one is um, like one light source is hitting from the front, one's hitting from the back, and then they're passing through each other. The light's passing through one side. And affecting the light on the other. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that kind of works. For the armor, and because the skin's the armor is not green, we have to alter the color. It's still got turquoise in it. But it'll have more uh, of this, like, it'll be slightly more grayish blue. Then to almost a black. Up here, we'll just get kind of nighttime, right?
And then there, there will be a few spots where you get like reflections of the uh, the torch like hitting some of the steel. Right, so you'd get you'd get like these warm reflection points. The torch coming like in over his shoulder and catching some of these like edges. Not a lot, but Enough to add some environment, some ambience. Let's see, a little bit of light comes back in here. Thanks. It is, uh, just take it from the reference photo. Take good reference, figure it out. Right, and then push a little more. This 
So we will really get that like bright moon reflection on his shoulder. Might be a little bit higher, but make adjustments as necessary. Something like so. And then we can always tone it down where we need. I don't know why people don't like reference. Reference material for the figures. Especially when dealing with something complex. There was a thing in drawing too that was like that. Uh, Gentry's Minis, thanks for following. In illustration, there was like this try hard mentality of like well you draw from reference and it's like yeah you know what everything looks like i don't know i don't know what a tiger stripes exactly look like draw from reference Oh, you must draw everything from memory. Makes no sense. Okay, um, so the knife is actually pretty weird because the knife is in a position where it's not really going to reflect the torch, like the top of it will reflect the torch, but the front of it won't really. So it's sort of just going to be dark. I can cheat a little like moon moonlight on it in terms of like getting some reflections down. But uh it sh should just mostly be like a dark black. Oh, we'll just black it out for the time being. Just so it's not bothering me.
Um, yeah. So most of this is all hidden behind the door. It's not a huge point of interest. So I don't have to do a whole lot with that. Some moonlight that comes over onto these. I'm just going to kind of mark where it goes just to get an idea. Uh, there's probably a cast shadow I need to add from where his arm like goes across him Let me see So he Goes on him like this. Where's he go? Hmm, something like that. Might be slightly down this way more, but yeah, he basically goes like that. So there would probably be a cast shadow, but it would be so subtle, like on his arm, because the torch would like come around from enough sides and has like some thickness, like thickness and volume to it, that it's not just like in the the middle. Uh, so I probably won't worry about it. Yeah, you can see like the light comes in this way and then it comes out this way. So on the knife, you probably get like a nice strong reflection that runs something like this. What's your favorite application with Chimera paint? Like, what is... Like, is there anything off the top of your head you like them for over everything else? Well, they don't have... They're single pigment, for one, so you don't have to, like, worry about them graying out. And you can mix, like, a proper chromatic black with them. So that's one nice thing about them. Uh... 
high pigment density and everything else so that you just don't get with some other paints right so he kind of goes here he goes there Um, what would very likely happen with this guy, and I'll probably come back and kind of add it, is that the light's going to come down and sort of bounce off the red of the other guy's cape, and it's very light, and it's going to add some like reddish tone to his lower parts of his arm. So you have like the moonlight coming in from the middle, but then he's also getting like a reflection off of his back and and cape and stuff, his hood. So very unusual, but that's a thing. So you have to think about reflected light also. Bounce lights off of, you know, little things nearby. Continue. Push some of this. The hood we want like very orange. Like because it is uh, red, but we're blowing it out, right? We're making it overexposed to the flame. Uh, it's not going to be like pure red, so we have to make it like a super intense, like yellow orange kind of color to match to the color of the flame. Then it can go through reds and things. But it's what'll make it read as like a bright, like a super bright red in, in context with the rest of the scene. So you get this kind of cold, purplish red. And then the actual like red, red is only in these like mid-tones, these transition points. Um, thanks Roxanne. And then he's kind of hanging out behind the door, like I said. So a lot of this would be like so black back here. And it might be a thing I do before like the end is where I might come in with like an airbrush or whatever. And just like really black out some of this, some of these parts. Not that you'll ever really see them anyways. Uh, just to like make it ultra intense dark in, in the, like the crazy deep recesses is why I don't really even need to think about like what color his pants are because you're never going to see it they're so stacked on top of each other
like under here I might want to think about what this red does with the kind of turquoise. You get these like very grayish tones. Maybe something so little as just like trying to give some shape. So if this curves away from the, the torch because the torch is directly overhead. And this under here, we are gonna get this like reddish orange in the transition point. Color is very interesting. Hello, Almondale. Welcome. Well, welcome in. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing well. Just painting a little goblin man right here. Talking about a lot about how colors interact and blah, 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 blah. Make sure I get that Terminator. Okay, I want to zoom out for a second so I can kind of get a better look at them. Right? I like to do this, see how it's working, how the colors are interacting. Get a feeling for the scene. All right, Sebastian. Look, 
You don't have to make up for Richard when he's not here, okay? Kind of define the leather. So another big thing is going to be like the leather should not be as bright. The, I can't make the leather as bright as the skin. It's not a thing. Uh, so I have to be careful with how intense I make that. It's got to be darker so I can I can push the lights on the leather some but it's still gonna be in the end it's still gonna be a, a darker tone than the than the skin Really, we want the skin to be like nice and bright. Also, the color of the eyes are wrong at the moment. They are too white. They're too neutral. So I need to just glaze some blue across them. them a little closer to that color scheme we're going for. Uh, I have a idea in mind, Almondale. I have I have like uh, a sensation, right? But I don't have like a clear picture. I just kind of go until I get and then I reach a point that I want. Uh, for more complex, like on a normal figure where I'm not trying to do like a bunch of fancy lighting and playing with like specific color tones and all these things that really mess with the, the like look, right? Like I'm dealing with two opposing light sources. Uh, this is more complicated than, than normal. So here I have like a reference, but I don't have like a specific color I don't have recipes or anything, so I'm searching for the values and light to get to where I want the figure to be.
so that he's properly lit up. Constantly just, it's a back and forth, okay? Push and pull the color until I get it where I want it to be. Make small adjustments. Which is really like directly over his arm, so it's like right here. So that's going to be like one of the most intense parts of light. And that might be as far as I push the uh, the light on him, right? I'll have to judge more once I have more context. Um, it's really dependent on uh, some of the other coloration.
Chaotic painting, hello. Okay, let's look here. Uh, he probably needs a bit more light on his back and on the top of his hand. So I'm trying to get these lights right. Get the main level of light right first and then I can make adjustments to the, the midtones. And like what are the parts that are going to be like really, really intense? I mean, I don't paint all of Joaquin's models, but I paint a lot of them. I would have, you should have expected that this one was going to happen at some point. I can't tell you that. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, Mad for Minis. Not answering that one. I got three more scouts to paint. How's that? I'll probably do those. Not on stream or anything. Just going to do them. All right, so arm has changed up a little bit.
probably still push the cloak a little more in a couple spots. Oh, they will, but what's hilarious is they don't even have a codex now. <laughs> You can give me all the crap I want, and then I'll be like, ah, ha, 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 very funny. You don't have a codex. And actually, it wasn't the lore nerds that was, that were giving me issues. It was the, uh, it was the rules people that wanted to be like, you can't play Scouts in 10th edition 40k. Ha 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 Guess what? You can't play Death Watch in 10th edition 40k. Enjoy your Agents of the Imperium Codex. Also, I'm playing Kill Team, not 40k. So I do what I want. They gave you a pretty sweet coat he has? No, that coat he has model is ugly. I'm sorry. That's not a good model. I disagree. Dude, painters don't care. Gamers are the worst. Painters are like, just have fun with your models. Who cares, you know? I don't think you can save that new Cody as you could save him with resculpting. It's just boring. And in general, I tend to think that their new sculpts are really nice. But for me, it's just, I don't know, kind of lame. Just a boring figure. All right, let's look at his teeth. He needs to have... Uh, yeah, the old quote he has is better. It's just a better looking model. Oh, oh, I was off camera. Whatever. Anyways, just trying to add a little shine to his teeth. A little sparker. Okay. Um, what do I want to do? I really have to, like, sit here and just, like, refine the crap out of this. Uh... Like, get into all these little edge highlights and everything. Just blend and... Work on stuff like this, where I just sit here and, like, line leather straps. I've got some micro volumes on his face to fix.
There's some some very tiny details to do. But in general, I think the color, I'm happier with the color now. You kind of see the difference on him. He's like not quite as green as he was. It's a little closer to gray. He's like a little green in the mid-tone, but... Huh? Uh, is it hard to paint without seeing all the goblins together? Yes, it is. Uh, this is why I have like multiple, that's why I have reference, reference photo. Um, what will probably happen is I will assemble, like I'll paint kind of to this level, most of them, and then I'll put them together and then I can like kind of do finishing touches on them like all together so that they're like everything's uh, lined up so the next big one is to do these two guys uh, and when I say like put them together I, like I won't glue it I'll just like dry assemble it because it's all like in sub assemblies. So I will I will like dry assemble it and then the background is gonna help a lot too because it's gonna add a lot of context. Uh, and then yeah, we'll we'll get like a better idea for how everything's going. But anyways, I think I'm probably gonna call I know it was slightly shorter, but I think I'm gonna call it there for tonight. And then uh, we'll get back to it next week. No, I've never painted my work surface a color. I mean, I have paint like you're talking about like th my work surface like this no Nobody. I, well, I don't know. Whatever. I think I'm just going to call it. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you all later. Oh, my, all right, fine. We'll write into this person. Okay. I don't know who that is, but sure. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Have a great rest of your week and have a good weekend. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.